Uh, well, this is joint work with Christian Hethard and Gustavo Buscalia. <clears throat> um, this is a brief outline of the presentation. I will give a brief motivation uh, for the problem, then I will try to explain the main ingredients of our variational formulation, a few numerical examples, and some extensions that we are considering now using Nish's method. And then I will try to say what I'm my goal for the future in this project. So in the last few years, we have been working in microfluidics, mainly with in-house codes for capillarity and liquidic membranes using level set formulations and also Lagrangian formulations. But more recently, we started to work with micro swimmers and we moved to Phoenix and Fibrate doing that. So all these problems have few things in common, uh, they all happen at very small scales, like 10 microns to 1 millimeter maximum. Uh, there is an ambient incompressible fluid, and there is an internal fluid or an internal material, mm -hmm. and a well-defined interface that separates the interior from the ambient. Okay? So there, is, there are some similarities in the approach that we take. In this, in this work, I will focus on the micro-swimmers. Biological and synthetic microswimmers. How is that? <laughs> <laughs> <a> bacteria. Oh, <laughs> okay. uh, so, of, of course, these problems are happening at very small scales. So, they, they swim at low range of numbers. That's the reason of the title of the talk. These are typical examples of these uh, entities. Uh, you know, probably them, Salmonella. And they think this is a parasite in the, in the interesting the frogs. But, they are very funny, and there are also synthetic microswimmers. They are designed to, to deliver drugs at very specific locations uh, in the body. This is an articulated microswimmer. Uh, it's driven magnetically. Uh, you have a net displacement because it is uh, articulated. I mean, they say if you don't do it, it's just because some engineer is having a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. And this is the, the, the thing that we are trying to simulate in this project. So this is our version of the swimmer that we want to, to simulate. This is uh, basically a Kirchhoff rod. The problem, is, the, the rod problem is governed by the central line. Okay? But the, the, the swimmer has a thickness, mm, and it is immersed in a, an ambient fluid, which is this 2D mesh. So we have a 1D mesh for the solid and a 2D mesh for the fluid. The surface of the swimmer, which is denoted by this calligraphic S, all points on the surface are attached to some point on the uh, 1D mesh. Okay? This is important to, to understand later on in the formulation. Okay, the, the rod. The rod is a Kirchhoff rod, this is a classical model. Uh, the, the configuration of the rod is described by this vector field Q. And we have two deformation measures which is the, the axial and the bending. You see T uh, is the tangent vector to the, to the uh, line of the rod, and N is the normal vector. So Q basically is the axial displacement and the vertical displacement. And then we have this epsilon zero and kappa zero, which are uh, called spontaneous uh, values of the elongation and curvature. This is what I impose. I try the, the swimmer to curve that way, but we will end up uh, deforming according to the interaction with the fluid. So I will not impose the kinematics, I will impose these things to make the swimmer to, to move. Okay? And the swimmer is endowed, uh, the, the rod is endowed with this energy uh, in which C epsilon and C kappa are constitutive parameters. So kappa is basically the curvature and uh, epsilon is the stretching. Okay. For the fluid, it is simpler. It is just a Stokes fluid, incompressible. Eventually, the viscosity may depend on the shear rate, so we can simulate shear thinning or shear thickening with this simple model. This is called Karoya Suda. Okay, so I will try to, to explain. This is not always easy. Uh, the main ingredients involved in this formulation. So what we do to simulate this is to write the virtual work principle for the rod. 
The first term corresponds to the virtual power of the internal forces in the rod. The second term for the virtual power of the forces that the fluid exerts on the rod. And then the right hand side is the external force. The important thing here is that this virtual velocity, delta Q, are the velocities or the virtual velocities for the rod. And delta W are the virtual velocities for the fluid that corresponds to this virtual delta Q. So the, the important guy here is this space in which we have a relation between the, 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 the functions in the fluid and in the rod according to that expression. W has to be that operator H applied to a function P. So this, this operator looks like this. And basically, that operator says, if I move the central line of the, of the rod, how the point on the surface of the rod moves. That's all. So this is called the space of kinematical admissible motions for, for this problem. So the discrete formulation is the following. I will omit the details about the blue term in terms of stabilization that we add. Then we have these rod terms that basically involve the first variation of that energy that I showed before. And then we have the fluid term. So if I'm given the velocity u and pay, uh, the pressure p in the fluid, I can assemble this term, which is uh, the Stokes form, uh, the, the variational form of the Stokes equation. Okay, so this H delta Q, I call that W, and this is important ingredient uh, here. So if I'm given E1P, and I can assemble um, that by linear form and uh, solve the uh, equilibrium equation for the rod, so for the sweep. Okay, that's the, the point. So how we implement this in fiber? This is the way we uh, managed to do that a few years ago but we will try to improve this in the future. Basically, we we'll do the following. We make this additive decomposition for the velocity field in the fluid. So this, this field satisfies homogeneous Dirichlet boundary conditions at the surface of the rod. And then we make a linear combination of the velocities uh, of these WH functions. This alpha are the degrees of freedom of the rod. Okay? So I have to assemble that residual. I, implement like this. I make this residual function, which depends on the degrees of freedom of the rod. I reconstruct that velocity here, solve for the fluid, so I have to solve a system here, the Stokes problem, and then I assemble the residual by hand. Everything is doing by, by hand, okay? Uh, so I give this function to SciPy optimize, and I compute by newton Krilov. So when we compute the Jacobian, it computes numerically. So for each column of the Jacobian, I have to solve a stock problem, so it's very expensive. This is a drawback of this formulation. We are hopefully trying to improve in the future. So just to, to give a few details about the implementation of the rod, this is basically uh, the first variation of the energy you have to compute like this, so it's a bunch of symbolic expressions that you implement easily in Fibrate. Just to show this is quite compact, you see I'm using Hermit elements for the rod, cubic Hermit element, elements. Um, and for the fluid, it's even simpler. Uh, we use P1, P1 Lagrangian elements. Uh, we stabilize. Oh? Is that numeric stable? Uh, no, because we stabilize. Okay. okay? We have this uh, tau uh, gradient P <coughs> test function. Uh, yeah, otherwise, anything would work. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but it's, uh, it's stable. Why? Uh, what? Why do you want to use P1, P1? It's cheaper okay. than using Taylor Hood or something. Well, I think it's also because you don't have interpolate yet, so they have to do like manual access to... Yeah, exactly. I wanted to avoid to, to have to deal with the mid yeah, yeah. Uh, edge degree of freedom. That's right. We'll fix this for you and then you can use a nice instrument. Yeah, okay. You can use the P1 is a P2. P1? They're essentially a P1, but on different matches in this way, you can still interpolate using P1. Yes. Yeah, perhaps it will complicate a, a bit the implementation, but yeah, yeah but that's not the, the big, uh, <laughs> the, the important thing in this, in this talk. <coughs> so basically, it is stabilized with this uh, Laplacian suppression, basically. So there are a few examples. Here, I have 
a clamped beam. This is not a swimmer because it's <laughs> fixed. Um, so basically, I impose a, a spontaneous curvature that de makes the, the, the bar to roll up. And then I activate an inlet here. It's like a valve, something like this. So then I activate an inlet to make the, the thing to, to open. OK. In my screen, this is very small, so <laughs> I cannot almost see it. This is, <coughs> this is a swimmer. Here I'm comparing a swimmer in a shear thinning and a shear thickening uh, fluid. Mm -hmm. So remember that I'm not imposing the kinematics. I am just impose the curvature that I try to attain. But then as a result of interaction with the fluid, it will deform less or more, and it will swim faster. This is a viscosity field. So you see in the shear thinning case, it's swimming faster. There are some imperfections, of course, in the mesh. So it starts to move in that direction. Uh, OK. And this is another example. This is more recent. I did it with a master student. I make the swimmer to interact with a concentration field in which, uh, for which I solve this convection diffusion problem with an ALE formulation. Uh, I let the swimmer to absorb this, this concentration. So this is the concentration intake as a function of time. I, I didn't mention, but the mesh is distorted a lot along the process. So I have to remesh almost each time step or every five, six time steps. When I project information from the old mesh to the new mesh, I have some perturbations. Okay, yeah, okay. Perhaps I have to interpolate, I don't know, but in that case I will lose mass. So yeah. well, it's uh, something to, to, to decide. OK, we have some error estimates. Uh, we, we have proven uh, numerically conversions of the nonlinear problem. But we have also, for a linearized version of the problem, an estimate. I think I will omit some details. Uh, it's for a 1D situation, uh, a simplified domain, 0, 1, and a clamp beam in both ends. So we, I, I, just to mention, we have to uh, consider the, the, the order of approximation for the fluid and for the rod. And so we have this estimate that we, we obtain for the configuration of the rod. The important thing is to notice that we depend on the discretization of the rod, which is capital H, and the interpolation we use for the rod is uh, Ks1 and Ks2 for the axial and the vertical components of this vector Q. But we also depend on the discretization of the fluid, which is a small h. Uh, and of course, the order of approximation for the, for the fluid. Uh, the, the most <laughs> worrying term is the h to the one half. Uh, this comes from an interpolation error that you have when the mesh of the fluid doesn't coincide in the x position with the mesh of the rod, which will be the case in general. But apparently, this is a pessimistic estimate, or this term is very small, because when we compute the conversions rate as a function of time for all quantities uh, using a manufacturer solution, we get the, the effective order of conversions for, for all quantities. So uh, in the H1 norm for the fluid order one, because we use P1, P1. And then for the rod in the H2 norm and H1 norm, uh, almost order two. So uh, possibly that term is not really playing a role uh, in the simulations. Uh, okay, now the extension uh, that we are considering. We are trying to move to a Nietzsche formulation to impose the due boundary conditions quickly. What? Okay, I will try to okay, fast, uh, talk faster. So basically, uh, when you <coughs> want to impose the, the due conditions uh, in weak form, you integrate by parts and you retain that term. These are the fluid equations, momentum, continuity, which is stabilization, and uh, the, the rod equation. So we retain that term. We add this term for adjoint consistency. And then we have the Nietzsche penalization term. So we have the difference between velocity in the fluid and uh, in the rod. So uh, I just write this more compactly like this. This is the velocity of the swimmer at the surface of the swimmer. And the only detail here is that we can replace these two terms here 
by using this equation testing against the W functions by these two volumetric terms and this uh, additional term, which it seems to be more accurate than working with these two surface terms. Okay, what's the idea of working with Nietzsche? That you can work independently with a normal component and a tangential component. So for the normal, you want no penetration. And the, for tangential component, you, have, uh, you, you want to pose a friction law, for instance. Like the tangent part of the stress is proportional to the tangent part of the velocity difference. So in that case, that formulation, if you work independently with normal and tangential, you can put that friction model there. Um, basically, we end up with this uh, formulation, which seems to be more, more realistic from, from the point of view of the physics. Okay? Uh, I have a result here. This is simulation for different friction coefficients. Uh, 10 to the minus 5 would, would be free sleep. 10 to the 5 would be uh, adherence. It's like the, the normal uh, adherence condition and some intermediate value. You can see with free sleep, it, it may manage to, to swim faster. Uh, OK, so these are just a few examples. And what's the outlook for the future? Well, we are trying to improve our uh, implementation, possibly by using the external operator. I was already talking to Asim and David. We can assemble everything together at the same time, because I have, we have functions in one mesh, functions in other mesh, and I have to relate the degrees of freedom of one mesh to the other. So using the external operator stuff, perhaps we, we can do that. I will try. And then I will be able to solve my forward problem faster. So the, the next goal would be to couple this to some optimal control strategies to make the swimmer to swim whatever we want. So uh, that's the reason why I need a faster <laughs> forward yeah. solver. Uh, perhaps using the hydro sheen that was presented yesterday or something would be nice uh, to try. OK, so thanks. Yeah. <laughs>
is the first one is, uh, so since you mentioned Spur, there are some simulations with big set model for this kind of things from a kinetic point of view. And what model? Big set. G I C S E K. Uh, and what they end up also proving analytically, well, from a modern point of view, is the fact that you have an Einstein viscosity effect. Are you capable of observing this or to observe this numerically? Uh, I'm not sure I understood. Uh, what effect? An Einstein viscosity. So the viscosity of the, the actual viscosity of the fluid is not the original viscosity of the fluid due to the presence of the swimmer inside of it. Ah, no, no. Uh, and, and the second thing is uh, you can do um, you can use the mass conserving scheme from Lederer and Jokola uh, Krishnan and uh, and Joachim Schroeder. This will give you the normal potential component when you solve for the fluids so if you can impose the coupling there strongly and you can treat nonlinear constitutive laws of the fluid. Okay, I will see that. Perhaps I will talk to you later to get the reference. Thank you.